Hello guys, today we are going to talk about a couple of Nicolas Cage movies, well not two, we're going to talk about one here and we're going to talk about one in the next video. First one here, we're going to talk about the movie Mandy, I just saw this recently with my wife and some people, this is like a really good movie. Um, this came out in 2018, it's not rated but I would just, just assume it's R. It's two hours and a minute long, it has 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb without 75,000 ish user votes, it has a a meta score of 81% with 347 critics. It's directed by uh, Panos um, Kosmatos. Or Cosmo, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, he also did. Um, he also wrote a Beyond the Black Rainbow, which kind of came out eight years before then. He also worked on the movie Tombstone as kind of in the behind the scenes kind of thing. Movie stars Nicolas Cage, who we all know from, geez, I don't know, anything, <laughs> lots of things, um, National Treasure or Raising Arizona or whatever. It also stars, uh, also stars, um, Andrea, Andrea Riseborough, who was also in movie Birdman. The movie is streaming on AMC, Hoopla, Shudder, and Plex. It's available to rent and buy on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube, Voodoo, Microsoft Store. It's available to rent only on Charter, and it's available to buy only on Redbox. Um, and the movie was released on DVD same year, 2018. So this movie is now my thoughts. This is a great movie. Um, this movie definitely, this movie takes place in the 1983 and it really, really, really is charged up on 1980s isms in pretty much every aspect, which is fantastic. Um, the biggest thing to keep in mind with this film, this is something I noticed because I watched this with, with my wife's friends and everyone was like flabbergasted by it. And yeah, it's a shocking movie, but it came to my attention how how less how movies have evolved over the years in terms of like just sheer craziness in a movie because I watched a lot of older movies that had a lot of this stuff that's in this movie in the like hardcore shit and it could just be me because I'm a filmaholic but these people they like when I watched it with them they it was like they haven't seen it ever and this shit they've been doing since this, like, 60s through the 80s, they've been doing this shit, and they act like they're just seeing it for the first time. It just kind of makes you realize, like, how movies have changed so much over time. Because I remember when even when this movie came out, I remember everyone saying, oh, this is a crazy-ass movie. And I watch it, and I'm like, yeah, it is, but it's like, we've, but crazy's been done before. It's crazy, but it's like, and it's really good. Like, when I watched it, I was like, this is a really good movie. What makes this movie great is, one, is the atmosphere is a big thing. Um, I mean, the special effects are good. They're good special effects. Um, acting's fantastic. Like, especially Nicolas Cage in this movie. Like, solid. Like, like really good. Um, I like the girl that plays Mandy. She's really cool. I like her a lot. They did a great job casting her. Really everyone in the movie, really. Um, I think... I think the biggest thing... Here's the thing. This It's not that this movie is a slow burn. It really isn't. It's just... It's a trippy burn. And by trippy, I mean... I mean, it's... I mean, the movie does a lot of visual effects to kind of blend in with the storytelling. And that can lead to, like, some, like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this kind of stuff? But it's nothing, it's nothing like, you know. If you've seen, if you watch a lot of older movies, you kind of be familiar with what they're kind of going for in this film. But if you haven't watched anything made before 2010 or 2000 even, then you're not going to know what the fuck this shit is. You know? Um, but yeah, I, but yeah, effects, writing's good. The writing, 
the writing, there's dialogue in the film, but the film never makes it feel like the dialogue is necessary. And I always kind of appreciate a film like this. It's not a long... And, and the thing I think I love most about this film is that... Is that the film will catch you off guard every little bit with a little dose of humor. Like, it's not like sprinkled throughout the film. It's kind of more... Not in chunks, but it's like you get to a point all of a sudden, here's a little bit of humor. And that kind of... And that's good. It, it eases things a little bit because the movie goes through a lot of shit. And... And having a little humor in there kind of makes things a little bit more f flow better. And, but yeah, the movie, the movie itself is just really solid. Um, in terms of cage movies, is it his craziest movie? Um, I think, I don't know if it's his craziest movie, but I think it's his most... I think I think what makes Mandy stand out. I think this was, I think this was the first movie that really really put in the idea of a great indie movie plus because plus Nicholas Cage because the last five to ten years we've seen a huge rise in indie movies, huge rise, um, and it. And that's Nicolas Cage's feel because a lot of you forget Nicolas Cage got his start being in acclaimed, critically acclaimed indie movies. That's how he got his start. And then once he got into, once he, everything got into the 90s, he started to become, you know, Hollywood and had some stuff there. But after, you know, but for a period he was just in shitty films. Like films with zero quality whatsoever. Either studio films or indie films, they were just shitty. But... But he found he found a knack, and I will talk more about this if when I do a Nicolas Cage profile video. But he kind of found this. He kind of found his rhythm again. He found he refound his ability to be in excellent indie films, and we're seeing it all pay off here. And I could argue that's even better now because because independent filmmakers got to have a lot more to work with in in the eighties. And they have more room to get, like, a voice because, you know, all the mediums of media and sharing. So, something like Mandy is, like, super sick as well. There's, and there's been a ton of good ones. Like, um, Colors in Space or something like that. Um, um, Wally's Wonderland. I don't, I can't, I don't think I've done, I don't know if I've done a recommendation video on that. I probably have. But that one was good, too. I mean, and this one was really good. Like, I think this was kind of the first one where people were like, oh my god, Nicolas Cage is in great movies again. And they're not Hollywood films. Um, but yeah, this overall, this movie's really solid. If I had to compare it to anything, I'd say something along the lines of maybe like, kind of maybe like the first Mad Max movie. Um, maybe a touch of Evil Dead-isms a little bit. Um, there, there's... There's elements, like, pretty much just, like, any anything shocking that was made in the 70s into the 80s would probably be the best thing to put there. Um, but it's still a solid movie. I definitely recommend it for sure. And, yeah, it's definitely available, so go ahead and check it out. And, uh, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, in case you want to chat with anyone at the Campy Company, you don't want to use the YouTube comment section, there are a couple options. The first one is we have a Discord channel. You can find a link to that in the about page slash about section of our channel. We also have a community tab on our channel that, as well, and you can chat with, and you can chat with anyone through that and see all the Campy Company updates there as well. Um, we also, we also have a Patreon page in the works. The main goal of that page is to raise some money to give the channel a bit bigger of a budget to do more ambitious things. And also to start making merchandise for the channel, which merchandise will be geared toward aspects of the channel you guys enjoy. So any support we get for that is much appreciated. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like the videos and have a good day.